In the late 1920s, the Norddeutsche Lower Line once again found itself competing with its international rivals, with speed now being the top priority for many companies. To keep up with the competitors, the NDL ordered two fast liners in 1927 for regular Atlantic service. The first of the duo was the SS Bremen. The great speed of the vessel gave her the ability to make an Atlantic crossing in as little as 5 days. Although her top speed was officially 27.5 knots, some claimed that during her sea trials the vessel reached up to 32 knots. The brand new company Deutsche Schiff und Maschinenbau was given the task of constructing the Bremen. The amount of steel used for the procedure was equal to approximately 7,000 tons with about 800 tons being saved. The first ship to possess a new type of bulbous bow called the Taylor bulbous bow, the ship was innovative in more than one way. On Thursday, August 16, 1928, the Bremen was launched by President Paul von Hindenburg, shown here in her namesake city. This occurred just one day after her sister Europa was launched at Hamburg. The two ships were considered the most technologically advanced liners in the world. Due to the high luxury and speed standards, the ship required 170 engineers. A characteristic feature of both the Bremen and Europa was a seaplane catapult used for mail delivery. The plane landed at the Blexen base after taking off a few hours before arrival. The four boiler rooms of the Bremen were airtight and they, as well as her machinery, were designed by Professor Dr. Gustav Bauer. A total of eight steam turbine blowers supplied the ship's boiler rooms with combustion air for her oil burn. Due to the pressure, airlocks were the only way to access the boiler rooms. There were 20 water tube boilers powered by oil with 227 oil burners firing 9 single enders and 11 double enders placed in 4 banks making the pressure reach 23 atmospheres. The temperature was as high as 698 degrees Fahrenheit and the maximum capacity for generating steam was 500 tons per hour. For tests done in port, when the airlocks needed to be opened, the vessel had three boilers with their own blower. The surface for heating was equal to 183,500 square feet with 94,570 square feet for the air preheater surface as well as 41,710 square feet for that of the superheater. The incoming water was first heated to 266 degrees Fahrenheit. The Bremen consumed 33 tons of fuel oil per hour. Her bunkers had a capacity of 7,552 tons. About 135,000 shaft horsepower were generated by the ship through her four geared steam turbines. All had low, medium, and high pressure, as well as a reverse turbine. When the ship was put in reverse, 65% of forward power could be used. With the turbines making 1,800 rounds per minute, her propellers generated 180 rounds per minute. This gave power of 84,000 shaft horsepower. The vessel was driven forward by four bronze propellers of a 197 inch diameter and a 205 inch pitch. Each of them had a mass of 17 tons. The Bremen's four diesel generators generated 230 volts, with the output being 520 kilowatt. The vessel's 21,000 lamps, 20 elevators, as well as electric cookers were powered by 420 electric motors. Originally, the Bremen was intended to make her maiden voyage together with her sister, Europa. Unfortunately, however, the latter had a fire during fitting out and was unavailable to join. The Bremen therefore departed Bremenhaven 
en route to New York on the 16th of July 1929. At the helm was Commodore Leopold Ziegenbein. Her crossing lasted 4 days, 17 hours and 42 minutes, breaking the record of Cunard Line's Mauritania, shown here. Her average speed of 27.83 knots granted her the prize of the Blue Ribbon. The voyage was also the first one in history to involve mail delivery by a plane launched from the ship. Pilot Baron Jobs von Studnitz, 27, working for Lufthansa, flew a Heikel HE-12 flow plane for 20 miles east of Fire Island. There was a total of six mail bags on board, carrying 11,000 pieces of mail with a mass of 220 pounds. They were delivered to shore a long time before the ship arrived in New York. The return crossing resulted in the ship taking the eastbound blue ribbon with a speed of 27.91 knots. Her total time was 4 days, 14 hours, and 30 minutes. This made the Bremen the first liner to break two records on two legs on her maiden voyage. The plane with the mail was launched while the ship was heading east in the English Channel near Cherbourg, France. 18,000 letters were carried to Bremerhaven. During the 1930s, Bremen herself, as well as the 58th Pier in New York where she often docked, were often the sites of anti-Nazi demonstrations. On the 26th of July 1935, she was boarded by an anti-Nazi group, after which her Nazi flag was torn apart and thrown into the Hudson River. According to law at that time, both the Nazi and the German Empire flags were official flag of the German government. After this, the U.S. proclaimed that no German symbols were harmed, as the Nazi swastika flag was the one destroyed. The laws regarding flags were changed on September 15, 1935. From that on, the flag of the Weimar Republic was proclaimed co-national flag. Today, it is the official flag of Germany. February 11, 1939 marked the day the Bremen started her cruise through South America, becoming the largest ship to cross the Panama Canal. Her last voyage to New York began on August 22nd of that year, resulting in almost 190 transatlantic crossings completed in her 10 years of service. The high command of the Kriegsmarine ordered all of their ships to return to their bases on the 26th of August 1939 as the invasion of Poland was drawing near. The Bremen received the order while being two days from New York. On August 30th, with her 1,770 passengers having disembarked, she departed New York order to head to Murmansk, Russian SSR, on the 1st of September 1939, the official start date of World War II. She was painted in the traditional gray wartime camouflage. She arrived in Murmansk on the 6th of September, having avoided cruisers of the British Royal Navy with her speed and bad weather coming to her advantage. As the winter war between Finland and Soviet Union began, the Bremen sped to Bremerhaven on the 10th of December 1939, to where she arrived three days later. On her way, she was targeted by British submarine HMS Salmon. The Salmon was eventually forced to submerge by a Dornier Do 18 seaplane, escorting the Bremen, and the submarine's commander afterwards decided not to torpedo the vessel, not seeing such actions as legal thus possibly delaying the start on, of unrestricted warfare among submarines. During the war, the vessel served the purpose of a barracks ship, and she was even intended to be used for a planned invasion of Great Britain, codenamed code Operation Sea Lion. But on the 16th of March 1941, a crew member set the Bremen alight, resulting in the ship becoming completely gutted and useless. After an investigation, it was determined that the crew member made the move because of personal grudge against the Bremen's parent company, not related to the war. Beginning in 1942, the vessel was dismantled all the way to her waterline. 
as a munition material resource. 1946 saw the remains of the once Grand Bremen being taken under tow up the river Weser and being destroyed by explosives after being beached on a sandbar in Blexen, Norderheim. Some parts of the wreckage may still be seen today, being all that is left of the great liner. In 2003, a radio feature with the length of one hour was released by Radio Bremen, titled Queen of the Seas, the story of the rapid steamer Bremen. It featured former crewmen of the Bremen, such as Detlef Michelers. In 2004, there was a stamp released showing the Bremen in Manhattan. The Obersee Museum in Bremen, Germany, has a model of the ship in a scale of 1 to 100. Bremen's sister ship Europa was built by Nord Deutscher Lloyd as their second 50,000 gross ton liner. Just like her sister, the Europa had a streamlined, low profile and a high speed engines powered by turbines. She also had a bulbous bow. Both vessels had a 27.5 knot cruising speed and made it possible for the company to run a two-ship transatlantic service instead of the required three. Her crossings took only about five days to complete. Just like her sister, the Europa was built and launched at Blomenwurst, Hamburg, going down the slipway on August 15, 1928, but all wasn't that smooth. Her intended spring 1929 completion was delayed by a fire during fitting out at a dock with equipment. When the fire started on March 26, 1929, it was finally taken under control only in the evening. Damage was done on most of the interior along with the turbines. The decision to repair the vessel only came to be after lengthy talks between Norddeutsche Lloyd and Blomenwurst. The Europa was finally completed on the 22nd of February 1930, with the cause of the fire never really determined. On the 19th of March 1930, the Europa began her maiden voyage and with a time of 4 days, 17 hours and 6 minutes, took the westbound blue ribbon from her sister. Her average speed was 27.91 knots. After the voyage, the ship's funnels were raised by 15 feet due to passengers having complained about soot coming on the deck. The raising resulted in the complaint stopping. The Blue Ribbon was held by the Europa until June 1933, when it was taken by her sister. Europa, just like her sister, had a seaplane in between her funnels which flew from the ship to a Blacksand port for seaplanes. However, the catapults were removed from both vessels in the next few years. As the Second World War began, the Europa was not much involved in mi any military action. Just like her sister, the Europa was to take part in Operation Sea Lion and was also to be converted into an aircraft carrier. However, 1945 saw the Europa seized by the Allies renamed USS Europa AP-177 and given the role of a troop ship. 28-year-old Ensign Dolin was tasked with handling over the captain's pistol, a symbol of surrender. On the 8th of May 1945, the Europa became a war prize of the United States, commissioned by the Navy on August 25th of that year. At the helm was Captain B.F. Perry. On September 11, 1945, the Europa left Bremerhaven, heading for Southampton, England, after taking on 4,500 returning American troops, she arrived to New York City on the 24th of May. She was subsequently modified to be able to carry more troops and travel to Southampton twice to bring American troops back to the U.S. On March 15, 1946, she once again departed New York, heading to Kirkwall, Orkney Islands, and then Bremerhaven. On March 24, she was moored at the latter location. As her interiors were being removed, 
small fires erupted across the Europa. This happened mostly because she was fitted with low quality replacements for her original fittings due to a shortage of materials after the war effort. Crews also found serious damages in her home. May 2nd of 1946 saw the Europa being decommissioned and the U.S. Department of State took her over on June 8th of the same year. As compensation for some war losses, she was soon given to France. After the war, the Europa was taken by the Compagnie Générale Transatlantique, or French Line, as a replacement for the SS Normandy. The latter vessel was destroyed in a fire at her New York pier during conversion to an American troop. The liner was taken to the port of Le Havre to be refitted. However, there were many difficulties encountered by the restoration crews. The ship broke free during a storm on December 8, 1946, colliding with the wreck of the Paris, a liner that caught fire at her pier several years earlier. The refitting was eventually completed at the Chantiers de l'Atlantique shipyard in Saint-Nazaire, France after the Europa was raised in April of 1947. In October of 1949, the ship once again caught fire, with the some passenger spaces being damaged. The ship finally entered service on the 2nd of August 1950. Her yellow Norddeutsche Lloyd funnel colors were replaced by French Line's red funnels with black tops, and her name was changed to Liberté. This was her first home voyage after five years of mishaps. The Liberté became quite popular in the next few years, being the company's flagship until 1961, when the new SS France entered service. The Grand Liner Europa, later known as the Liberté, met her end in La Spezia, Italy, where she was laid up in 1962 and finally scrapped the following year. The American film The French Line, starring actress Jane Russell, featured the Liberté in a prominent way, while she was also in the final scenes of the film Sabrina with Humphrey Bogart and Audrey Hepburn. Finally, the ship was shown in the film How to Marry a Million. The first and third films were released in 1953, while the second was released a year later. 